Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Coffee with Great Wealth Strategies. Got my cup of joe filling it up, and this is actually a, uh, listen, it's a hard cup. Looks like a paper cup, but uh, uh, anyways, today is March 4th, and uh, this is Eric Kenyon coming at you, also known as Regular Joe. Uh, just a little disclaimer, I am just Regular Joe. <laughs> I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a broker, real estate agent, or any of those things. I'm out here doing research for myself, finding great information about things, and sharing that with you all that typically is not found in the mainstream media. But I did find something that was pretty interesting just last week, and this was in the Wall Street Journal. And it's kind of talking about how the Federal Reserve is pretty divided right now, in that they, uh, if they continue doing what they're doing, there's some of them that are very, very worried that we are going to have rampant inflation uh, coming very soon, as soon as the job market starts to pick up, which um, you know, I'm not going to hold my breath on right now, but we'll see how it goes. So let's talk about what uh, what's going on within the Federal Reserve. So there's a there's a committee. It's the uh, Federal Reserve's Federal Open Market Committee. It's called the FOMC, uh, which last met in January 29th uh, to the 30th. They're reportedly divided on the subject of whether or not the American Central Bank should continue providing explicit support to the economy through mortgage-backed securities and U.S. Treasury bond purchases. This is that $40 billion bailout that we uh, um, are hearing about all the time. These uh, contra This controversial program, which was enacted in response to the 2007-2009 financial panic and subsequent global recession, now equates to roughly, now get this, $85 billion in monetary stimulus still coming out of the Federal Reserve. So the Wall Street Journal's John Hillstrath reported on February 20th that several members of the FOMC remain fearful that the Fed's easy money policy could one day lead to rampant inflation when the U.S. job market begins to improve. These concerns, which have been voiced virtually every meeting at every meeting uh, since the first iteration of the quantitative easing was launched in 2009, have so far proved uh, very overcautious. However, uh, the source suggested that Developments in the American financial markets are leading sub-Fed officials to believe that these initiatives could post a long-term threat to the economy. Several participants noted that, and this is a quote, several participants noted that very large portfolio of long-duration assets would, under certain circumstances, expose the Federal Reserve to significant capital losses when these holdings were unwound. But others pointed to the offsetting factors, and one noted that losses would not impede the effective operation of monetary policy, uh, stated the FOMC minutes, and these minutes are uh, public records so you can look them up, which were released uh, yesterday, which was uh, February 20th is the date we're talking about here. Ultimately, the FOMC once again adopted a wait-and-see policy, especially as it pertains to maintaining low interest rates, which, according to Chairman Ben Bernanke, is one of the primary objectives of quantitative easing. The next meeting is set for March, which is this month, coming up right now, when members intend to revisit this, uh, uh, some of these and, and deal with some of the concerns. So, you know, of course, I'm out there educating you guys on what's going to happen and what's going on. we got a, a Fed meeting coming up here really soon. Uh, investors, you know, that are out there looking at the markets uh, and not quite sure how these developments are going to affect their portfolios and their retirement, you know, and any kind of pullback on Federal Reserve support could have very unintended side effects in both markets and uh, a wider economy as well as the worldwide economy. So, you know, I just encourage folks to go out there and look at other avenues and other things that, you um, uh, that I've done to try and protect your assets. And so you can visit Great Wealth Strategies to get some more information. Um, I did just uh, work a, a relationship out with uh, um, a uh, the bank on yourself, folks. And uh, I've got a great offer there if you go to... Um, um, uh, the 160, it's a 160 year method that's, uh, just continues to work. If you go to, I think it is the uh, page that's, uh, how to generate wealth, click on that button and then go down, I think to the second one, I believe it's the second one. You can get information on, um, on that, uh, uh, instrument, how that works. And, uh, 
when you fill out the little collector on that, you are going to get uh, an enormous, you're going to get some DVDs, uh, some downloads, some access to books, videos, whole bunch of stuff. And uh, I highly recommend checking it out. Um, I did, and I'm uh, going through that process personally right now. Really like what these guys have done. There's 500,000 people using this method in the United States right now. So go check it out. Um, once again, this is Eric Kenyon with uh, Coffee with Great Wealth Strategies, also known as Regular Joe. Uh, please do me a favor and fill up somebody else's cup by passing this on, uh, Twittering it, Facebooking it, uh, send it out there, get this message out so everybody knows what's going on and they've got one, they're one step ahead of the game. Uh, thanks a lot for joining me and I appreciate your time. Bye-bye.